YouTubers, man, this is crazy. Look at this. Entire Muslim world will recognize Israel if it withdraws to 67 line. The Saudi representative to the UN said the entire Muslim world will recognize Israel if it withdraws to the green line. Um, there's been multiple U.S. presidents, uh, including Obama, Trump, others that have tried to do um, peace accords with Israel. And they always say the same line. They say, you know, we want to establish uh, Israeli state within the 67 lines for peace and safety. And um, that's always been their thing, the land for peace swap. Every time that's happened in the past, uh, when they gave Gaza to Hamas, it didn't create peace. It created more war. So um, this is incredible that they're saying this. I've said several times that there is no plan B to a two-state solution. A two-state solution with the end of occupation and with the creation of conditions for most of the suffering of the Palestinian people is, uh, in my opinion, the only way to guarantee that peace is established and at the same time that uh, two states can live together in security and in mutual recognition. And we'll do everything we can to work in that direction. There is no shift in my commitment, the commitment to the security of Israel, period. No shift, not at all. But I tell you what there is a shift in. The shift is that we have to, we still need a two-state solution. It is the only answer, the only answer. And what I'm convinced of is that we can now move, as I had did even before I was able to negotiate, well, I shouldn't, before the ceasefire was negotiated. The entire Muslim world will normalize relations with Israel once it withdraws to the 67 boundary. Saudi Arabia's representative to the United Nations, Abdallah al Mulalimine, said in an interview with Arab News on Sunday. Sorry, I need to work on my Arabic a little bit. The official and latest Saudi position is that we are prepared to normalize relations with Israel as soon as Israel implements the elements of the Saudi peace initiative that was presented in 2002. If you remember Trump's uh, stepson, or not stepson, his son-in-law, uh, Jared Kushner, was all about normalizing relations with Israel. So we have two peace agreements being signed today at the White House between Israel and, and Arab countries. Uh, this really signals the end, uh, we believe, of the Arab-Israeli conflict. There's still a lot more work to do, but for, you know, for, for 70 years in the region, you've had the Arab countries uh, not wanting to uh, interact with, with Israel in a substantive way. This and this is an even bigger step forward that they would go on to say that the entire Muslim world will recognize Israel if it withdraws to the 67 line. This goes right back to Daniel 9.27, uh, talking about the Antichrist. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. For the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. This has been one of the most difficult riddles to decipher throughout history. Um, in the in the first part of it, Chuck Missler does a great job of breaking down how Jesus showed up exactly to the day that this would occur. Um, you know, that's a topic for another video. But with the recent jaguar, leopard, and dragon statues, um, you know, it's been called a jaguar or a leopard. It's, it's only one statue. But when that thing was revealed at the United Nations, it was called the guardian of peace and security, the guardian of peace and safety. Um, everybody should know by now, 1 Thessalonians 5.3, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Nope, most people don't say this. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. In my video where I was going through the, the 
what the jaguar and the dragon mean, um, I discovered a thing behind them, a sculpture called Wisdom, and it was this quote, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And when you go through that video, it says, Behold, their valiant ones shall create without. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. And when you go through what the ambassadors of peace represents, it's always the United Nations. The United Nations has always supported Israel going back to the um, 67 lines and giving away what is historically Judea and Samaria. So what I meant to say is that uh, Judea and Samaria is the West Bank of Israel, according to politicians. Um, historically, it has always belonged to Israel. Um, and ever since I've been watching, I've been born again since, I don't know, 2008 or something, and I've had such a fascina fascination with prophecy. The um, American presidents have always tried to coerce Israel into a two-state solution, living side by side in peace and security. They've said that a hundred times. And, um, you know, right here, they call it the two-state solution, what it is and why it hasn't happened. Um, there's so much history behind this, it's hard to encapsulate it in one video. But basically... We've got this issue where it's kind of the bait. Um, and this is what I believe the Antichrist will make his um, appearance on, that he will create this, uh, this peace treaty that Israel will give away the West Bank thinking that they will gain peace, and it will turn out to be the time of Jacob's trouble, basically. Um, again, there's so much history, so much Bible prophecy here, it's hard to, you know, put it all into one place. Here's another video, or here's another article I've been kind of sitting on. The Temple Mount movement is soaring under Israel's new government, defying a decades-long political arrangement. Israeli authorities are enabling an unprecedented rise in Jewish prayer at the Jerusalem holy site. What we've had here is that for the longest time, um, the Muslim, how do you say it, Waqft? <laughs> I think it's like W-A-Q-F. It's Waft or Waqft. <laughs> it's just not a word I can pronounce. They've been in control of the... Um, the the mosque and the platform to the mosque and they've prevented any Jewish people in the past from coming up and praying there. And now, because of um, Benny Gantz and his government, they're allowing more and more of that. Um, the status quo has been what they've maintained there for the longest time. Basically, the status quo meaning that Jews were forbidden from going there and praying, and now um, that is beginning to change. And this is a first in in decades uh, since there's been a, a battle over this area. The, um, the end time scripture makes the point that there will be a third temple there. Um, a lot of people believe there will be a third Jewish temple and here's one of the scriptures that supports it. Revelation 11, There was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall be tramp, uh, tread underfoot forty and two months. Then it goes into the two witnesses. So these are incredible prophetic events that reveal the time that we're living in. Um, they'll say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. That's uh, what immediately precedes the tribulation. And they're going for it. I don't know what time this will occur, but 
Um, this is as of yesterday that this came out. So keep an eye on these events. This is very prophetic what's going on here. Um, feel free to add, you know, relevant information in the comment section. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is coming. The tribulation is at the doorstep. How close is it? I don't know, but these are major Bible prophecies that are 2,000 years old and older. God bless.